it's Rebecca from the Glitch Stitchery. I'm here today to spin up a sample of Angora Rabbit Fluff. Uh, I mean, I could call it wool, but fluff has always seemed more descriptive of this to me. So, I have an ounce here. And this was sent to me by um, a newer fiber producer. They have two rabbits named Snowflake and Coconut, and I have some pictures of those that I'll be adding in shortly. Now, this is very clean, first of all, but there are multiple kinds of Angora rabbits and some of them you clip with clippers or shears and then some of them will shed the fluff naturally and you just kind of brush it out. Now, if I understand correctly, these ones are the kind you brush out, which is my personal preference because when you have to shear or clip anything, not just rabbits, the cut side will have a sharper edge to it. So usually the resulting yarn will be slightly more uh, prickly. So this will be very soft. Now, one ounce is a lot <laughs> of Angora Rabbit because it does stretch very far. Now I have, I think, spun some Angora on the channel before. I tend to cart it into bats to stretch it out longer, so I have some bats right now that are a blend of Angora and Blueface Leicester. Leicester? My BFL. My tongue's not working yet this morning. So this is going to be just Angora and because it is just Angora, I'm going to be using a spindle. Now I like using the wheel for most things, but for something this fine, I'm concerned about getting too much twist in it and over spinning it. So a spindle is a little bit better. And it's also only an ounce, so it would like a bobbin holds four ounces, so it, it would look a little funny. Anyway, I don't spin the spindles as much as I used to. They are what I started with, but I'm a little out of practice, so hopefully this will go okay. Give it a twist. Uh, yeah, it's going to take some practice. Give it a twist. It's a little bit more difficult for me than the wheel is, if I'm being honest. Gonna be working on this today. Hopefully I can get the whole thing spun. But I will have links in the description to the shop selling the rabbit foof and to the maker of this specific spindle. I have a whole collection of drop spindles of different types. This one works pretty well for more fragile samples. Yeah, I'm already starting to look better. And this is probably what I'll be using for the yak as well, although I'm not ready to spin that today. <laughs> now you could process this out more, cart it up so it's a little bit more, um, a little bit more organized, a little easier to spin. But you don't have to. So I'm probably just going to take handfuls at a time, give this a flick, and then do my best to draft before we have to wind on. <sighs> yeah, it'll be a little thick and thin. It's going to be a two ply, so I am going to ply it back on itself at the end. Alright, so I am going to put this in time lapse and work on this in that method. I am probably going to also fluff this out with a comb a little bit before I keep going just to make it a little easier because you, quite often when you send Angora in the mail it gets a little bit compressed and that's just the way it is. It, it's a very fragile soft fiber so it's going to need to be fluffed up a little once you get it. Um, and actually the funny thing about Angora, I don't buy it that often because it is a little bit more on the I mean, it's a little bit more expensive than what I normally buy. I love Angora though. Angora is what caused me to want to learn to spin in the first place. So basically what happened was I learned to crochet and then I went to a, um, like a country fair type of deal with a friend of mine. 
and there was a spinning booth and the woman had an angora rabbit on her lap and it was the kind where you just kind of where the where the fluff just sheds off and she was taking handfuls of fluff off the rabbit and spinning on her wheel and I just thought that was the coolest thing so I wanted angora rabbit yarn but I couldn't afford very much of it but I could afford fluff and a spindle and that is why I learned to spin I wanted angora rabbit yarn so I'm going to work on this today and hopefully at the end I'll have some nice yarn to show you. So let's see how this goes. I'm done spinning my two ply angora and it is a very messy spin for me. Uh, I am very out of practice on using spindles, I'll admit. So not my absolute best work, but it is very soft and fluffy. And I could see it being used as a stripe in a hat or maybe as an accent stripe in a weaving project. Anyway, I still need to wash it um, with angora because of how fragile it is. And my preference is to wash after spinning and also just if it's slightly dirty, not super dirty, and gore is usually not super dirty anyway, but it actually ends up with a little bit more grip to it because the fiber as itself is very slippery. So um, any extra bit of grip is very helpful. Now, technically speaking, spinning Angora completely by itself pure is not my preferred method of spinning Angora. Um, my preference is more like 25% Angora, 75% wool, just because wool has that crimp and that crimp gives it that nice bit of grippiness so that it holds together a little better. And that just makes it much easier to spin. And also Angora is pretty precious, so I don't necessarily wanna use all of it by itself. Um, I can stretch it longer if I blend it with something else. I do really like it with BFL and it's really nice with silk as well. So this is done. I am going to get it packed up and sent back to the person who owns the rabbits so that she has a sample of yarn from her rabbits. Because that's always fun. I, I like for people who produce fiber to have an example of what, what their animals create, especially if the animals are pets, because that's just like a really fun thing, I think. Um, so yeah, I really, really enjoyed spinning this. It's very soft. And it is really nice Angora. It's a good quality Angora. And um, I'll have links in the description to where to buy her fiber specifically, as well as where to get the two spindles I used. Because those are my favorite spindles. And if I did recommend spindles to people, which I don't generally, just because I don't use them very often. But if I were to recommend any, those would be the two I would recommend. Um, beyond that, I guess that finishes up this video. So thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you all again soon.